underwriting deals is such a major pain point for people. Most don't want to do it. And the people that are good at it are few and far between. That is why after six years of being in the industry and buying over 1,200 apartments using my best-selling multifamily deal analyzer, I created Real Estate Lab, a full suite acquisition software for multifamily investors. We have built a product that helps investors automate their acquisitions and close more deals all in a cloud-based platform. You can go to realestatelab.com and sign up today using the promo code TAG2 for 10% off your first 12 months. This is David Tupin. Thanks for listening. Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. Welcome everybody back. Another episode of the Apartment Guys podcast. And as many of you know by now, we are actually rebranding the podcast to the Apartment Gurus. Uh, thanks to uh, my lovely, esteemed partner, Chelsea Garber, joining me on the show uh, every other episode or so. And uh, so we can't be the apartment guys anymore and, uh, we're, we're changing, <laughs> changing brands, but, um, speaking of gurus, wow, we have a Titan in the multifamily space on the show today. Uh, Mr. Rod Cleef is for probably most of you does not need an introduction. Uh, but Rod is a nationally known, uh, speaker, uh, thought leader, philanthropist, podcast host, uh, syndicator, and and just you know, event organ like puts on great uh, national level events. And I am thrilled. This is you've been on my list for the last two plus years, Mr. Cleef, and I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, so what a what a kind introduction, Titan. Now that's a first. I and, and it's total <laughs> BS. Just if you're listening, please know that that's total BS. But very kind of you to say that. Thank you. Well, my listen, pleasure. I'm glad to be here. Let's have some fun, brother. Yeah, yeah, you bet. So, so I yeah, I mentioned all the the different. I'm sure I missed a, a few uh, the, diff the different ways that you uh, contribute and uh, all the different avenues that you uh, that you have in place in your business and in your thought leadership uh, as well, I'll just go ahead and mention right now, uh, right off the bat that uh, Rod has an event coming up at the end of Denver at the end of J uh, July, excuse me, in Denver. There we go. My mouth is working. And, um, and that's going to be ex super exciting. Uh, Rod, you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Well, I appreciate it. I mean, I could, I could talk about it later if you want. They don't, if, for those that don't even know who I am. But but what's cool is right across the mountains behind you there, Tate. Okay. So you have yep. no excuse this time. You said you wanted to come. I, I just realized <laughs> how close it is for you. Yep. But yeah, no, I, I have a boot camp coming up. And, and guys, listen, if you're interested in multifamily, you know what is about to hit the fan and there's going to be incredible opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity is coming. Now, when you hear my story, you'll find out what happened to me in 2008 and nine. I was hiding under a rock because I had my butt handed to me, but, but opportunity is coming. So if you want to learn this business, it's three days of this business. It's not a sales pitch. Um, you know, you'll learn how to pick a market, how to evaluate that market, how to build a team. And there'll be a upwards of a thousand people there. So there'll be a lot of opportunity to build a team while you're there. A lot of yeah. successful operators, a lot of newbies as well. And, you know, you'll learn how to find deals every way you can possibly imagine, how to finance those deals, how to fund those deals, how to raise all the money you need for them, how to, how to syndicate them, joint venture, you know, do due diligence, underwrite, and and even property manage. And once you get to know me, you'll realize that, you know, I believe 80 to 90% of your success in anything is mindset. And I yeah. spend time on mindset. You know, you come to my boot camp, the first thing we do is goal setting on steroids, because how the mm -hmm. heck do you get anything if you don't know what it is? Yeah. Okay. And and so uh, you've got to know what you want with with and you've got to know why you want it to push through the fear and to push through, you know, limiting beliefs, or maybe you're comfortable. And the comfort zone's a warm place, but 
We all know nothing grows there. But if you'll humor me, Tate, for those that don't know who I am, I'd love to yeah. take a few minutes and just tell yes. my story because I Please think do. it'll add framework. Okay. So yeah. so so if you haven't heard this, if you have, I apologize, but but I'll try to do it as quick as possible. But you know, I immigrated to this country when I was six years old. I'm an immigrant. I was born in the Netherlands, Holland, you know, wooden mm-hmm. shoes, windmills, cheese, and uh and I immigrated with my brother, Albert, and my mother's Vancha um, when I was six. Uh, we ended up in Denver, Colorado, and we really struggled initially. So, you know, I remember eating expired food. We shopped at this expired food store. True story. Uh, mm. Drank powdered milk because it was cheaper than real milk with our cereal in the morning. And I promise you it sucked. But, you know, and then, mm. you know, I remember wearing hand-me-down clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school until I finally got a job at Burger King when I was 14 because I lied about my age by a year. And, and uh you know, so I could buy my own clothes. Now you may have listeners that had it harder than I did, or maybe even have it harder now. And, and there are tough times coming, but there's opportunity coming. But, but, you know, I knew I wanted more back then. And luckily my mom had an incredible work ethic. So she babysat kids. So we'd have enough money to eat. And with her babysitting money, she was an entrepreneur. So she invested in the stock market successfully. She did IPOs, but she also invested in real estate. And her first real estate acquisition was housed directly across the street from us, from a family named the jewels that she paid 30, thousand dollars for when I was 14. When I was 17, she told me it had gone up $20,000 in value in her sleep. And I'm like, what you made? And this is when 20,000 was a lot of money. You made $20,000 and you didn't do anything. Screw college. I'm getting into real estate, mom. So I went out and um, I got my real estate broker's license in Colorado right when I turned 18. Back then, you could do it with education. This is 1978. Now they got smart you, to be a broker and have your own office. You've got to have some experience. But I was a broker. My first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. My, and I'm still living at home, of course. My second year, 10 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000. Wow. What happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10X my income? And I was just talking about it. I met a guy that taught me about mindset and psychology. I was just dating his daughter. And he was, I, I was smart enough to know I had to go work for another broker. And he was another broker. And you know, and, and how really, like I said, 80 to 90% of your success in anything, your relationships, your business, everything, your health is your mindset and your psychology. Yeah. Fast forward to today, I've owned 2000 houses that I've rented long-term. I've owned, I own thousands of apartment units. Um, you know, in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. Wow. And you might, yeah. And you said, wow. And I said, wow. And yeah. I thought, you know, and my, let my ego get the best of me. And that's $8,300 an hour on a 40 hour work week, which of course, anybody that holds still long enough heard about my head got so big, I could barely fit it through a door. I thought I was a real estate God. And you know, when that happens, the real God or the universe or whatever you believe will give you a nice little smackdown. Well, that was 2008. I lost mm-hmm. everything. I lost $50 million in 2008 conservatively. And so what I'm known for talking about on my podcast, uh, and it's kind of a green light day for my podcast today, we're on our 700th episode dropping. Wow. Today. Yeah. Congratulations. And thank you. And, and we just broke 13 million downloads, which I'm really proud of. That but, is so awesome. But yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a cool day for that. But, yeah. but anyway, you know, what I'm known for talking about on the show and at my boot camps, of course, is the psychology and mindset it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place, but as important and maybe even more important, what it took to recover from that. And right now, more than ever, with what's coming, mindset is critical because it's going to get ugly. And don't get me started on the fake news and all the crap they put out there, you know, and the lies. Uh, if you get sucked into that, you know, it's going to, whatever you focus on gets bigger, both positive right. or negative. So you really get, you know, if you're listening to Tate, you know, I know you're a leader, no question. You wouldn't be here if you weren't. And right now, more than ever, the world needs leaders. So it's really important that you pay attention to what you focus on right now and bring in the good stuff, you know, mm-hmm. um, stand guard at the door to your mind and, you know, keep out that, the, the news and the, you know, the news isn't there to inform us. It's there to startle us and scare That's us. Right. And, and it has a political agenda. So you just ignore it. Just do the headlines to stay on top of stuff, but don't get sucked into it. Bring in the good stuff. You know, like on my podcast, I do a clip every week called called Own Your Power. And that's just what it's about, owning your power. They're motivational with music. You give me five minutes a week, I'll juice you. Now, my podcast is called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. And I'll tell you how you can, you know, find it easier later. But, but um, oh, by the way, back to my podcast, to my boot camp for a minute. If you want to come to my boot camp for 197 bucks, um, text my name Rod to 72345. Okay, Rod to 72345. Or go to rodindenver.com. 
Okay. Then you got to remember the code rod friend. Okay. Use that as one word because that'll get you that 197 price. It'll ultimately be 700 bucks, but it'll also give you some awesome bonuses. You'll get my deal evaluator software, which is awesome with, you know, training videos, make it easy to understand. And you'll also get my document library, which I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on. Those two things alone are worth 10 times the 197. And um, so again, rod, text rod to 72345 or go to rodendenver.com and remember the code rod friend. I forgot to mention that. But um, uh, anyway, so, you know, if you want to drill down on some of these mindset strategies that I use to recover when I lost everything and really to have it in the first place, you know, I'm happy to elaborate on some of that. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You're speaking my language. The, the regular listeners know two things that you have spoken to so well, so well, so far. And that's number one, the power of these conferences, summits, whatever you want to call them, boot camps, they are wicked powerful. And it's where some really big things take place. Mm -hmm. I met uh, Chelsea Garber, who's our, my, one of my two partners in our business mm -hmm. at uh, Michael Blanc's Dealmaker Live. And, and uh, the one that just happened like a week or two yeah, ago. Or, yeah, oh, we, wow. Well, we met wow. in 2019. Gotcha. At, gotcha. Yeah. And Michael's uh, a great guy. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, like, Powerful things really happen at the listen, want, listen, this business is a team sport. And yeah. so you need to be around people that want to do this to, to build that team. Of course, there'll be upwards of a thousand people at mine to go. If, if it's not mine, go to a local meetup, whatever, but get around people that want to do this because you're going to need to, you know, hang your hat with the team initially to have some credibility yeah. with brokers and sellers and use the we word when you approach a broker and say, you know, we own 500 doors, even That's if right. there's someone else's, so that you have some credibility to do your first deal or two. And you'll meet these people at, you know, boot camps like mine that are coming up. And just again, mine is the July 29th, 30th and 31st in Denver and Denver's United's hub. Uh, you can fly there nonstop from anywhere. You yep. have no excuse tape, but, but nope. you can fly there nonstop from anywhere. And, and, uh, and I've got this room blocks like a hundred bucks a night for the room or maybe wow. or something like that. So it's, it's really like nothing. It's, it's, so you, you know, it's a time commitment, but listen, if you come, to my three day boot camp, and you don't love it. I don't mean like it. I mean freaking love it. You let me know at the end, I'll give you your money back. Yeah. Uh, it's never happened before, but there's a first time for everything. And I've had thousands of people attend my boot camp. But, you know, if you go to rodindenver.com or do the text, you know, text rod, you'll go to the bottom, you'll see hundreds of testimonials. The only, you know, we'll send a survey out after the event because I, I, you know, you learn from, from critical, you know, feedback. The only complaint we ever get is the food sucked or the room was too cold or something like that. You know, it's never about the content. But yeah. anyway. So you, shall we drill down on some? Yeah. Of so, and then, and then the second thing I wanted to mention is mindset. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows what a mindset junkie I am. Oh, uh, I was okay. a psychology Good. major in college. I'm a, I'm a big oh. law of attraction guy. And oh, yeah. uh, so, you know, I, I can't wait to hear what you're about to. Oh, thank you. You know, it's funny. Remember when the movie, the secret came out and the book, the secret, the law of yeah. attraction. I, I, I got that movie and I'm like, holy crap, that's what I've been doing for decades. And I didn't right. even know it. And I gave away literally, I'm not exaggerating, probably 2000 copies of that DVD because uh, wow. it's so powerful about the law of attraction. The only thing that it misses that movie is you got to take action. They don't talk about the action you have to take. You can't I just, agree. you know, sit and, and meditate and do all that, but, but yep. it absolutely works. So let's talk about yep. it. So the first thing we do at my boot camp, like I said, is we do goal setting on steroids because again, how do you get anything if you don't know what it is? And so that's the first thing we do. So let me describe that process. But if you can't make the boot camp, go to rodslinks.com, rodslinks.com, and it's got all my social media stuff. It's got my my uh, 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 podcast link. It's got my boot camp link. It's got. But at the bottom, I've got. I did this. On New Year's Day this year, I did this goal setting workshop that I do at my boot camps, about an hour and a half approximately with music. There's a guide you can download. Grab your spouse. Trust me, go do this. See, you know, do it together, but each of you write your own goals and then compare notes and see how aligned you are. You move in the same direction. Do you think that's important? Yeah. Uh, and then, absolutely. And then, and then, right. And then, and then have your kids do it if they're over, say, 10 years old. See, here's the thing. Most people spend more time planning a freaking birthday party than they do designing their lives. Yeah. This is designing your life. Okay. So, but let me describe the process real quick. Cause I think it'll add some value. So what you want to do is, and, 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 and again, what this does is it creates a burning desire. 
And, and if I didn't say that already, you've got to have that to, to, to take action. You know, so many people in this business are analytical and, and an analytical, especially an introvert, you know, they'll get caught up in analysis paralysis. And so you've got to get this juice to push through that stuff. Okay. So let me describe it. You pick an hour when you have a lot of energy, start there. Don't do it after a big meal, make sure you're well hydrated and just sit down and write down everything you could want in life, all the stuff, the houses, the cars, the boats, the jet skis, the planes, there's nothing wrong with stuff I don't care if you want a private Island, a yacht, a jet, write that down. Cause here's what it does. And don't do this in your head. If you're in your head, you're dead. You've got to write it down because what that does is it, it triggers something in your brain that's called the reticular activating system. And it's a subconscious filter. You're not aware of it consciously, but it po- your brain points you in the direction of what it thinks you're interested in. And the greatest, simplest example to show you of this is when you first buy a car. You never really notice them. You buy them, buy the car, you see them everywhere. Were that's they right. there before? Of course they were, but you just didn't notice them. And that's your reticular yeah. activating system. And the same thing applies to your goals. Okay. So write down what you want, write down how much cash flow you want from your, your multifamily real estate in three years, and then how much you want in 10 years. Write down, you know, um, how much money you want in the bank in three years and 10 years, you know, and and um, and and again, just everything big, large that you could impossibly imagine that you'll ever want in your lifetime. OK, this mm-hmm. is not just goal setting. This is much more than that. You can also write down everything you want to do in this lifetime, the places you want to visit. Um, you know, the maybe you want to write a book, you know, bucket list stuff. Maybe and I've got a friend climbing every mountain over 14000 feet with the beautiful mountain backdrop behind you there, Tate. Wow. And, you know, and, and me, I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane a few years ago. I'll never freaking do it again. But that that's the stuff you want on this list. Okay. Uh, As well as the goals. Also, I want you to write down what you want to learn in this lifetime. You know, maybe you want to learn a foreign language, maybe a skill set. If it's multifamily, for God's sakes, come to my freaking boot camp. You know, I'll give you the map. You just got to go do it. Um, But but write down what you want to learn. Then lastly, write down who you want to help. Mm. We will do more for others than we'll ever do for ourselves. You know, like I bought my parents a house here on a canal in Florida when my dad was alive, you know, bought him a car, took him on cruises. You know, who do you want to do things for? Write that down. This is the fuel, guys. This is this is what's going to get your butt up early, stay up late, work Saturdays to grind for a few years like most people won't. So you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. This is that fuel. OK, so write down everything you can think of. Then once you can't think of another thing, there's a couple more steps. I need you to put a time limit on each goal. Put a number by each goal as to how many years it's going to take you to achieve it. And don't overthink this. Just guess at it realizing that as human beings, we will overestimate what we can do in a year and we'll massively underestimate what we can do in five, 10, 20 years. So put it, but put a number by each goal. Just guess at it. And then I want you to pick your number one goal. I mean, that goal, when you get it, you're like, oh my God, you know, you've arrived when you achieve that goal, put it on another piece of paper. And again, if you go to rodslinks.com, there's a guide there you can download that walks you through this, but you can just use a piece of paper too. But Rod's links is got a ton of free stuff there, books and things like that too. So you should capture that. If you can write that down or put it in your phone or whatever, Rod's links, plural dot, both words, plural.com. There's a ton of free stuff. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, put that number one goal on a separate sheet of paper. Then put your top three one-year goals on a separate sheet of paper and leave room in between them. Again, if you got the guide, there's a space for that, but leave room in between them. It's just on paper. Mm-hmm. At this point, you're ahead of 99.9% of the people on the planet that do a news, New Year's resolution that's forgotten by the middle of February. But there's just a couple more quick steps. The goals are important, but why the goals are an absolute must is the most important piece. I need you to write down under each goal why it has to happen. Mm. It's the why that's going to drive you. And use emotionally charged words to describe your why. Words like amazing and beautiful and incredible and magnificent and abundant and so on and so forth. So I can show my kids what incredible success looks like. So I can show my wife or husband what it means to live a life of amazing abundance so we can have complete unbelievable freedom to do whatever we want whenever we want wherever we want bring whoever we want whatever's going to juice you write that down okay put something under each goal maybe some redundancy in between them but that's okay okay now i need you to shift gears and put some pain in there okay Mm. if you don't achieve the goal and make it hurt so i don't feel like a failure so i don't fail my kids So I don't fail my wife or husband, you know, so I don't live a life of regret. Why? 
Because as human beings, we'll do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. And again, this is that fuel to get your butt up to make this happen, right? This is that kind of to get to create that burning desire. You know, there was this nurse in Australia, Tate, um, hospice nurse. Um, her name was Bronnie Ware. And she asked her patients that were about to die, you know, do you have any regrets? She wrote a book about it. It's called The Five Regrets of Dying. You know what the number one regret was? Not living the life I could have lived, living someone else's life, not doing what I know I'm capable of. My God, I can't think of anything worse than that, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're one of these people that's fearing failure, please fear regret much more. Fear being in the same place you are a year from now, you know, that you are right now, unless you absolutely freaking love where you are right now. Get your butt to my boot camp and let me help you, you know, kick it across the finish line. Seriously, or if not mm -hmm. me, just go learn this business so you can capitalize on what's coming. So anyway, you've got your positive and negative reasons why. Then you've got to make some declarations to people who aren't afraid of your goals and or but definitely get pictures. Let me give you some examples. So I'll give you a public example. Um, Jim Carrey, the actor, the comedian, when he was flat broke, wrote himself a check for a million, uh, $10 million. And he used to go up by the Hollywood sign. He'd pull it out and he'd visualize cashing it. That's how much money he made for Dumb and Dumber. I'll give you another example. Um, Demi Lovato, the singer, when she was unknown like 12 years ago, posted on social media, one day I'm going to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. One day. Go not to watch this last one, the one before. See who sang the national anthem. I'll give you some personal examples for me. Um, when I was 18, I figured I had to have a four-door car to show people houses, right? So I got this bone ugly Ford Granada. Piece of crap. Bench seat in the front. Now, I figured that's what I needed, so I got it. But the guy I worked with that I told you first started me on this path about mindset and psychology, I dated his daughter, and he had two Corvettes, and he let me take her out in one. I'm like, oh, my God, this is freaking amazing. So I got a picture of a Corvette. I put it on the visor of my bone ugly granada. This is out of the out of the out of a magazine. This is before the internet, well before the internet. I got to put it on the visor of my granada within a year or two out of Corvette. Now let me tell you, I don't want you to think I'm bragging. I'm going to give you some examples. Um, uh, personal examples. And please know this stuff doesn't even interest me anymore. This is when the TV show Magnum PI was out there. And the actor's name was Tom Selleck. And he drove this Ferrari 308 in this series. And I, that was the first time I'd seen an exotic. I'm like, oh my God, that's incredible. And, um, uh, and I got a picture of that actual car, put it on the visor of my Corvette. And within a year or two, I had a Maserati look just like it. Wow. Last example. I'm the guy that always, actually, I'm gonna give you two more examples. I'm the guy that always wanted a Lamborghini. Okay. I know this, and if this stuff doesn't interest you, just replace it with what does. Okay. I was stupid and young and, you know, and thought I'd get the girls and all that stuff. So I, that I wanted a Lamborghini. Well, my son collected cars of model of, uh, uh had models uh, in his collection of, of exotic cars when he was nine years old. And, um, and, and, you know, and again, I'd wanted this thing my whole life, even before I got married and he had a model of the exact same color style Lamborghini that I ended up getting, which I wrecked. But I also want to mention, you know, when you're doing your goals, not to limit yourself, because, you know, when I lived in Denver, I knew I wanted to ultimately live on the beach and, you know, there's no beach in Denver, as you well know, where you live state. And, but I would visualize the palm trees and the sand and the surf and the waves. And 20 years later, I built this incredible $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach, on the beach on one side. And I had my boats on the backside. It was called a Gulf to Bay. It was a slice mm -hmm. through an Island. And that was unthinkable when I was 18. So, you know, but I didn't even believe it myself, but I made it happen because I, I put it down and I visualized and I made it happen. So don't limit yourself on your goals. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as it relates to pictures, let me, do you put these on YouTube? I do. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let me show you something. So this is my planner. It's a, yes, it's a paper planner. I know I use it. I'm a dinosaur, but in the back of this thing, I've got pictures that have been in here for 22 years. So those of you that are not watching this, they're in the back of my planner. It's a spiral planner. And I've got the plastic covered pictures. The first pictures are my gratitude pictures of my kids when they were very young. My kids are 30 and 26 now. Why do I have gratitude pictures in here? Because everything starts from gratitude. You manifest anything you want in life through gratitude, prayer, whatever you want to call it. You, you do it through gratitude. Even the movie, The Secret, we were just talking about the law of attraction. It's done with gratitude. So I've got my gratitude pictures. I've even got a gratitude vision board behind my green screen here because again it's super important but then i've got pictures of things that i wanted i talked about that house on the beach i lost it in all the craziness but it looked just like this top picture i had 10 foot high glass butt together i had travertine floors it's crazy it's before i ever built it, it look just like that if you saw a picture you'd be like holy cow it's the same thing 
bottom picture here. Look at these bottom pictures. See the white stone wall in those pictures? Yeah. That's my yep. backyard now. I live wow. in a compound. See the white stone wall? There's that crazy? Right, right I, behind you, yeah. Right behind me. And, and I live in a compound now. I've got six buildings. I've got a big main house. Big. Uh, I've got a guest house on the water, two-bedroom guest house on the water. I've got a media building with a exercise facility and a theater room. And I built a video studio there. And and because God's got a sense of humor, I can see my old house across the bay. It's literally right across wow. the bay from where I live now. It's hilarious. <laughs> But, you know, and then I've got pictures of, you know, stupid crap that I thought was important. I've got a few hundred thousand dollars worth of watches and that's still a vice. I still love my freaking watches. But <laughs> then there's a Lamborghini before I ever bought it. Mine was black, but this one's red in the picture. But the yeah. Rolls Royce, the Bentley, all this stuff that at one time I thought was important and I got it because I had pictures. So get the pictures, guys. Now, I know I've lost a few of you analytical ones that want to talk real estate. But when I tell you this is more important, please believe me. OK, yeah. Um so, so that starts there. It starts yeah. with those goals. Yeah. So I, it, what you did with your binder is, is similar to what we've done uh, individually in our company, which is nice. to put together vision boards, Yep. Uh, which yeah, I'm looking at mine right now and, and it's got the things up there. It's got the stuff. It's got the right. travel. See, see mine on the floor right there next to my recliner. There Absolutely. it is. There's one there of, it one is. Of them right there. Yep. I've got one for everything that I want. So, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it. we've talked about the power of vision boards and, and visualization on the show before. And and like, you know, like Rod said, if this is the most important aspect of any business planning you'll ever do. And uh, and just to just to um, really emphasize writing down the why and really charging it with as much emotion as you can. Rob meant uh, Rod mentioned, uh, you know, using descriptive words that like beautiful emotional and, words. Yes. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. That evoke emotion. And uh, that's really what puts the hook in them. You know, what's interesting. I had John Asaroff from The Secret uh, that did the vision board in The Secret, the movie, The Secret. I had him on my show. That was a real treat. Cool. We actually did business yeah. together, made some money together. But but, uh, you know, if you if you'll humor me, I'd love to bring up a couple other points that are Please. really important. OK, yeah. So so once you've got that burning desire, like come to my boot camp do the goal setting, then you've got to make a decision. And, you know, the Latin root for the word decision means to cut off. It means if you're going to burn, you know, take, take the island in battle, you're burning your ships because you're taking their ships home. That's a freaking decision. It's not a one toe in, you know, it's not a one foot in, one foot out. It is freaking done. You're committed. And you're like mm -hmm. a train on a track. Now, if you're not committed, you're going to get knocked off track. So it starts with a decision. And I'm going to tell you, Tony Robbins got a great quote. That is in your moments of decision, your destiny is shaped. Mm. Okay. And that's the truth of it. So, you, but you got to make that decision. Then the next thing is um, uh, you have to, um, I just lost, I completely had a brain for it. What the next thing is. Oh, um, let me. Uh, after, after <laughs> making a decision. Yeah. After making a decision. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. I, I'm it's, it's late in the day. I, okay. You have to, you have to take the first step. OK. Yeah. And, you know, like Dr. Martin Luther King said, you take that first step in faith and the next step is revealed. Lao Tzu a thousand years ago said the journey of a, of a thousand miles begins with a single step. But you got to take that step. And sometimes that step is the biggest step in your life. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, a lot of people are afraid to, you know, they get caught in analysis paralysis and they don't do it. You, you, you know, you analytical ones, you know, who I'm talking about, you know, who you are, you know, you have to check off every single box. And sometimes you just have to jump off the end of the diving board, recognizing that, that you'll recognize the next step as it comes up and so on and so forth. You know, like an example of this would be driving across the U.S. at night. Your headlights can see 50 feet in front of you and you know you'll make it because other people have done it. You might hit obstacles, but it's the same way with your goals. But you'll know you'll make it, but you got to take that first step. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is your peer group. Who you hang out with is who you become. You know, um, uh, and, and, and so, so for example, um, you know, if, if you're around people, like you, a lot of people will default to the people they went to school with or that they work with. And, and those people out of their fear, a fear of losing you or their limiting beliefs or their, you know, um, fear of, you know, of, of you doing better than them and then making them feel bad or their jealousy or, or you name it, they'll hold you back. And sometimes they're family. Okay. So right. I'll tell you, love your family, but choose your peers proactively meet people that want more out of life. Like you'll see at my boot camp. you know, I'm here. I'll, I'll brag for a minute. I have coaching students and they, I've been teaching about four and a half years and they now own somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 70,000 units that we know of. It's, it's gotta be more than that actually. And so, 
you know, I'm super proud of that. And most of those were done between, they're called warriors. My mentorship students are called my warriors. Those were done between warriors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got to get around people that want more out of life that aren't going to be afraid of your dreams and your goals. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like, for example, you know, I want to be around people that think what I think is hard is easy. About four years ago, I started my multifamily boardroom mastermind. It's a mastermind of the top players in the business. It's about 14 to 16 billion in assets in there. And we're, in fact, we're meeting next week in Houston, believe it or not. Uh, we're having one of our three yearly meetings next week. Because again, I personally want to be around people that think what I think is hard is easy. And that's who you want to be around when you're, you know, if you're going to play tennis, do you want to play somebody that's better than you or worse than you, right? You know the yeah, answer. Better, absolutely. Now, did I talk about limiting beliefs? Did I talk about that at all yet? I, uh, I you met you mentioned them, but you didn't go. Did I talk it. about you know getting my butt kicked and all that stuff? No, um, not really. No. Okay. All right. So. so so when I immigrated, there's a, there's a lesson in this story, and that's why I didn't want to forget. I lose track sometimes what I've said. So in, in um, you know when I immigrated, I didn't speak English. And I got thrown into school and I discovered what bullies were for the first time. I was six years old and I got my butt kicked and I hadn't learned how to fight back yet. And, you know, and then my mom, proud Dutch woman that she is, thought it'd be a great idea to send me to school in wooden shoes and those leather shorts the Germans wear for Oktoberfest, you oh know, the boy. later hosen. Yep. So I got my butt kicked again. And then, you know, the bullies would chase me home and my mom thought she was helping me by chasing them off with a fly swatter. So, you know, the next day ass kicking again. So, you know, and I came up with this belief system that I wasn't good enough. And, you know, a lot of people have these belief systems, these limiting belief systems, like I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm not smart enough, I'm not analytical enough, I'm not, you know, uh, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money. There's a reason that the acronym for belief systems is BS, because 99.9% .9 of them are BS. But mm -hmm. you've got to bring that stuff out into the daylight and look at it with your adult rational mind. I mean, it used to be where I would pray that the teacher wouldn't call on me because I was so afraid of being embarrassed. And now I speak in front of thousands of people a year in flip-flops. I don't care. And, and, and the point is, what I had to do is I had to look at that. I used to ask myself, how can I show them I'm good enough? I'm seriously. When I discovered this at a Tony Robbins event, when I was looking in the mirror, I cried for probably 20 minutes. I was like, mm. holy cow, that's it. You know, and, and, and so if you've got one of those that you're consciously aware of, if you're listening, you've got a limiting belief. And, and if, you, if you have something you feel like it's holding you back, really think about it, because sometimes you're not aware of what it is. Drag it out into the daylight. Look at it with your adult rational mind and burn it up. You know, I had to look at this every time it popped up. And the key word is consciously. Think about it consciously. Look at it consciously. And, and you'll diminish it. It'll take a few times, but you'll diminish it. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I had to say to myself, listen, if they reject me, they just don't know me. They don't know I love you, people and I've got a big heart. I'm a gift from God, just like they are. And, and if they reject me after all that, they're, they've got their own crap they're dealing with. It has nothing to do with me. And, but I had to consciously become aware of that to get past this. So again, use that if you have one of those yourself. So we talked about peer group, super important. You know, if, if you can't make my boot camp, get, go to a meetup group, go to around, get around people that want more out of life so that they're going to validate you. And, you know, like my warrior group every day, there's a dozen posts in there, people congratulating each other, meeting and, and, and raving when somebody does a deal. You want to be around people like that. Okay. The last thing, actually two, two things I got left. One is focus. We talked about that a little bit when we got started. Your focus is so freaking important right now, especially with what's coming. Mm -hmm. Bring in the good stuff, okay? And, and you know, I, I listen to two podcasts for the most part. I listen to Joe Rogan and I listen to Tim Ferriss. And those guys, you know, they get my, you know, I get excited about my 13 million downloads. They do that a week, right? Right, right. But Tim, and I, I want to hear both sides of the political spectrum, which is why I listen to him. But, but Tim Ferriss, um, uh, even though I don't agree with him politically, we won't go down that rabbit hole. He interviews the best of the best in the world at what they do. The best athletes, Michael Phelps, the best, you know, I want to be balanced, which is why I bring it all in. But uh, the best, uh, you know, actors, Jamie Foxx, Ed Norton, Hugh Jackman, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sly and all those guys. And then, you know, the billionaires like Ray Dalio, big CEOs of the largest companies in the world. And I started to hear a pattern. Because what he does is he deconstructs their success. He digs in how they achieve their success. And I started here a pattern, Tate. Most of them meditate. Mm. What does meditation enhance? Focus, right? Yeah, right. So, so, so there's a clue, guys. But um, let, me, let me end this, this tirade about goal setting and, and, and motivation with one thing. You know, I talked about that house I built on the beach. 
And I mean, this house is magnificent. I, I, let me describe it. I mean, uh, you know, again, I own the beach on one side, boats on the back side, big giant spiral staircase up through the middle. I had an elevator, wine cellar, uh, giant waterfall from the second floor balcony into the pool. You had to walk through the waterfall to get in the pool, pools and magazines. Two months after I moved in, after it was built, I worked for this thing for 20 years. Two months after I moved in, I'm floating in the pool at night. The pool's changing colors. It's got fiber optic lighting and I'm looking up at this testament to my ego, which is really what it was. It was to prove the world I was good enough. Mm. And I got depressed. And I don't mean just a little bit depressed. I mean, I got really depressed. And, and I'm like, what the hell? I've just achieved success like times 10,000. I've got the, the, you know, the Maserati in the garage, two Mercedes. I've got all the toys, beautiful family inside, beautiful home. How could this be happening? There were several things happening. That's why I want to mention it because it ties into goals. First of all, you should never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up behind it. Because like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish. You need a vision for the future. And I didn't know what I was going to do next. But it's never about the goals. You need them. You got to have them to create that burning desire. But it's about who you become on your path to the goals. And happiness comes from progress and growth. It's one of the things I teach in my boot camp. We do a, I teach you how to do a weekly plan. And one of the pieces of that is to celebrate anything you did the previous week. I don't care how small, because if you, if you acknowledge to yourself consciously that you're growing and progressing, the setbacks and the failures aren't going to be a big deal because you'll still be happy. Okay. So uh, that, that was the second piece. I didn't know what I was going to do next. So how was I going to grow? But the big piece was I'd been totally focused on myself. Rod, 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 show the world I matter, show the world I'm good enough. And, you know, and that's the year I, I met Tony Robbins and um, because I bought a bunch of books, you know, Dale Carnegie and all the motivational stuff. And I got one of Tony's books. And I'm like, man, this is good stuff. So I went and saw him live. By the way, if you can see him live, just do it. Trust me. You'll thank me uh, if you're listening while he's still speaking. But I found out that he fed families for the holidays. And I'm like, what a concept. Do something for someone else. I'm embarrassed to say I had to be 40 to get that memo. But um, I went back home and I called my brother because I was going to visit him and my family in Denver for Thanksgiving. And I said, let's feed five families for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And so he called his church and found five families that really needed help. And we bought, you know, frozen turkeys and food, big baskets of food, toys for the kids. And we really had a lot of fun buying this stuff when I got there. But the third family changed my life, Tate. We go up to this house and it was a row house where it's like a row of one bedroom units. And it wasn't even a one bedroom because you walk through the living room, through the bedroom to get to the kitchen, which had the bathroom off. It wasn't even a crappy one bedroom. There's a woman there with five kids. Wow. She comes out and she sees all the stuff. She starts crying. Her kids come out, two of the older ones start crying. I start crying. I couldn't help it. And I'm blessed to say in the last 22 years, we've now fed somewhere between 110, 120,000 kids here in Sarasota, Bradenton, Florida for the holidays. We've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to the kids that don't have the basic supplies for school. Don't get me started on that. We live in the greatest country on earth. You know, mm -hmm. I've done tens of thousands of teddy bears to the local police departments for officers to keep in their vehicle if they encounter a child that's been traumatized. Now, again, I'm not bragging. I just want to, there's a real message in this. Yeah. You know, and you, you know, you might be listening to Tate, you might have blood dripping from your teeth, you want this success so bad. So really listen up now. See, I was successful, but I was unfulfilled. You know, we've been taught to achieve to be happy, like we have to achieve before we can be happy. If you give back in any fashion, you're happily achieving. And I know mm -hmm. it's a play on words. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Achievement's a science. If you want to learn multifamily, get your butt to my boot camp. You will know what to do once you leave because I'll give you the blueprint and a map. You just got to go do it. That's a science. But fulfillment is an art, okay? You've got to find out what juices you. For me, it's kids. Maybe for you, it's kids too, but or maybe it's the elderly. Maybe it's the environment. Maybe it's animals. Whatever it is, give back right now. Don't say, I'll do it when I have money. Oh, you, you have money. You do it. You can do it. No, do it right now, even if it's just your time. Why? For first of all, you'll be happily achieving. And second of all, you'll get the success faster. That's the way God or the universe, whatever you believe works, whatever you give, you get back a hundredfold. And you know this, Tate. I mean, yeah. that's why you're successful. You give. And, and so, you know, anything you want in life, you give. You give happiness. You want happiness, give happiness. You want love, give love. You want money, give money in your time, and you'll have it. And so just leave you with that. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. I've got a page and a half of notes here, and I hopefully Thanks, the brother. listeners have have uh, really locked into this because it's so important. It's such important foundational stuff in your business and in your life. And I'm so glad that you you waited till the end to talk about fulfillment, because like you said, without that, 
but without that sense of mission and purpose and fulfillment, depression is really all that's left, right? Listen, I've interviewed guys on my show that are multimillionaires and I can see if they're like I was when I was 40 and I feel sorry for them because they're successful, but they're unfulfilled. They're unhappy in it. And I can't, I can't say anything because they have to evolve on their own. But yeah, those, the last pieces that are the gratitude and contribution, you've got to incorporate them yeah. into your life. That's how success comes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and it's magical stuff. Like gratitude is, is it, to me, it's, it's a secret sauce in life. And you can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. You can't be stressed and grateful. The achievers word for fear is stress. You can't be stressed and grateful. Same thing. Can't be angry and grateful at the same time. Gratitude improves our immune system, builds it. You know, it, it, it strengthens our immune system and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and lowers our blood pressure. It's, it's an incredible emo. It's the most powerful emotion we have, frankly. Yeah. And it, it's, it is magic. It really yeah. is, is a magical thing. So let me, let's back, let's zoom out for a second. I want to talk to you about, you know, we, you mentioned 08 and the, the getting the wiped out in 08 yeah. and the correction in 08. And, uh, you know, obviously between 08 and 2022 is a pretty it's a wild ride. Time. It's been a wild yeah. ride, but the, but the, but the, the, you know, what has hit the fan and mm -hmm. the fed has said they're raising the rates five more times. Right. You know, we were, we were uh, close to signing a contract on a $44 million asset. The, they raised the rates. The, the, there was price discovery, went down to 38 million. We still backed out. Okay. Pricing is still going down. Now we've got 138 unit under contract right now, screaming deal, Starbucks nearby 54,000 a door in Arkansas. And it's, it's a fantastic deal. Uh, and, and by the way, if you're a passive and you want to look into that uh, text partner to seven, two, three, four, five. If you're accredited, got to be accredited. I can't talk about it if, I'm, if you're not, but that's a great deal. Great returns. But, but, you know, and people say, should I wait until it crashes to buy? Well, no, like I, I'm buying that deal right now, but we kissed 300 frogs to find that deal too. Right. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of aggressive out there right now. And now is not the time to be aggressive. Now is the time to stress test the heck out of a deal, stress test the, 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 the interest rates, um, and, and, and stress test your break even and be very conservative because the mm -hmm. soup is going to hit the fan. I'm just telling you, if you think yeah. otherwise you're naive, it's, it's definitely coming. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in a lot of cash. Um, I've got access to a lot of cash and we'll, I'll teach you at my boot camp how to get access to cash and how to preframe mm -hmm. investors. So they're not fearful, but, but, um, you know, it, it is, it, it, it we're going to see some changes and, you know, yeah. there's, there's only one constant in life and that's change. And yeah. like I said, I was hiding under a rock when the last crash happened. You know, I got crushed by that wave. I'm surfing this wave, baby. Okay. And, 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 you know, there, if you listen to my podcast and maybe yours as well, you get some of these guys that have thousands and thousands of doors. Most of them started in nine, 10 and 11, 2009, 10, and 11. That's what we call a clue. Okay. Mm -hmm. and it's coming. So, yeah. You know, um, and if you're trying to learn the business in the thick of it, it's going to be too late. You, you really need to get busy right now, whether it's with me or not, but learn it as fast as you can Yeah. right now. So what do you, what was your, what do you think really got you from 08, 09, what, whatever that looked like for you mm -hmm. getting wiped out to, you know, building your dream house, the Maseratis, the Lambos, like wh what do you attribute? Well, that I did too. all that before 08 and 09. Okay. Oh, got it. I had okay. all, all that before the crash. Okay. Um, but, but, um, what, what, I mean, it was all the things we just talked about. Like yep. in 08 and 09, I was in a mastermind. We're talking about peer group. I was in Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership. It's 120 grand at the time for the year. It's three times that now, I think. But I was around people that were thriving in the crash. And they're like, 50 million, get up, you big puss, go make it happen. Those are the kind of people you want to be around, right? That aren't yeah. going to, you know, bemoan. And, you know, like if you came up to me and said, how are you doing, Rob? And I said, oh, my God, I am freaking fantastic. Life is amazing. Most people would take you wouldn't because you're evolved. But most people take a couple steps back and say Rod's off his meds. Right. <laughs> but if you came up to me and said, Rod, how you doing? Oh, my God, my back is killing me. I just lost 100 grand in the market, blah, blah, blah. You'll, they'll put your arm around you and say, oh, I feel you, brother. We connect through pain. You want to be around people that don't do that. You want to be around mm -hmm. people that kick your butt push you, motivate you, validate you when you're successful and congratulate you. So again, peer groups critical. Uh, but but it's, again, how did I recover it's all those things? Realigning with my goals, getting around the right people, managing my focus, um, made the decision that I wasn't going to be in a pity party anymore. 
massive freaking action. That's one of mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. favorite lines, massive freaking action. Action mm -hmm. mitigates all fear, you know, but, but you got to take it. Whenever you're stressed out, if you go take a lot of action and do things immediately, it'll mitigate all that. So those are yeah. the things I did, brother. Yeah, that's, it's so exciting. It's so, so cool to hear the story, Rod. And I really Thanks, appreciate man. you sharing, sharing it. And uh, it's inspirational and informative. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I've studied mindset a fair amount. I'm, I can't say I'm like a guru or an expert in it, but I've studied it my whole life. I was a psych major in college and, right. and, uh, and everything else in between then and now, and, and continue to feel like it is foundational in all aspects of your business, whether it's your and, no, and personal life, not yeah, just business, absolutely. Your relationships, everything. Yep. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, in, in our business, our, our business, the, the multifamily space is finding deals, finding dollars and managing your assets largely, right. That it's mm -hmm. simplifying, but in all three of those aspects of your business, if you don't have your head on, right, none of those three things are going to go well. Mm -hmm. And so I love Rod that you start with goals and you start with mindset uh, you. And you start with the peer group thing. That is huge, guys. Listeners, like we, we talk about th you, that you're an average of the five people you spend the most time with. That's what Rod's it's, it's been real. talking oh, about. It's, it's yeah. real. And, yeah. You know, listen, you come to my boot camp, you know, uh, you will laugh, you will cry, you will get really in touch with what you want and why you want it and who you are. We create an identity statement. This is not your typical real estate boot camp. You will leave freaking supercharged. Okay. You'd be like mm -hmm. a drag racer. And that's what it takes to get you to push through and take that action and do your first deal and go make it happen. And, and so, you know, um, yeah, you'll get all the technical stuff too. No worries. I had a lot of dry material in this business and syndication and finance and insurance and taxes and all that stuff that you need to have some basic understanding on. But the beautiful thing about multifamily, as you, I'm sure you talk about on the show is it's a team sport. You don't have, yep. you don't, you aren't going to do all aspects. I bought 2000 houses pretty much by myself. I had some employees, but, but that was, you know, but, but, um, you know, the multifamily is you do it with a team and you can play different roles in the team. You can be the, you know, the front man that, that goes out and builds relationships with brokers and investors and so on and so forth. You can, you know, find the deals. You can be the underwriter and the analytic person. You can be the process driven person that does the asset management and, you know, uh, come. So there's just a lot of places, a lot of hats that need to get filled. So there's a fit for you, regardless of what your personality style is. You agree with me on this, Tate? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, team sport and you know doing what you're best at inside of this space is really where it's at it's you want to figure out what your superpower is That's, and double down what on that. you just said is critical because if you're doing in your what if you're in your strength you're doing what you're good at First of all, you're going to love it. So work yep. is play. And right. then you hire a line or partner for your weaknesses. Success is inevitable. Okay. Yep. But, but you play to your strengths because why? Because you'll be passionate. And if you're passionate, like I hope you feel a little passion from me, you have the ability to influence people because you love it, but you got to love it to be passionate about it. If yep. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this has been amongst other things, this, this episode has been so energizing for me and, and Thanks, your, man. your passion is, is certainly contagious and, and, and very authentic too, I, I'll, I'll say, uh, which Thanks. is so important in life. And, you know, you've got a humility about you too, Rod. I'll just say that straight oh, up to you, you that, um, that, that to me is another secret sauce in this, you know, in, in this life, in this business and in your personal life, like, having, uh, you know, all kinds of success is a wonderful thing, but if you're not bringing other people along for the ride and, and being humble about, you know, that you're just another person, just like the person that hasn't maybe done what you've done yet. Uh, and, and, but you, you, you're there to help and serve them, man, that's, that is a thanks, recipe thanks, for thanks, success. Brother. Thanks, you brother. I, I don't know if I showed this, but there's there's some of the hundreds of thank you cards behind me from oh, wow. people whose life yeah. you can't see the whole wall behind me is covered behind my green screen. But yep. you know, I love this. Like I'm sure you love it. You get a lot I of do. great feedback, I'm sure. It. And it's just it's just it's a, it's a incredible thing. So but yeah, thanks for it, your kind words, brother. No, it's it's and it's it's very real. All right, so we've just got a few minutes left, Rod. This has got this has just flown by. I want to ask you not necessarily about any predictions about what's going to happen or, or even strategies, but more so like, 
my, I guess back to mindset here. Yeah. Like what, just stay focused on what you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and it's going it, to, there's going to be some ugly, there's going to be some layoffs and there will be pain and, and, and recognize there will be incredible opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't get sucked into the fear, there will be incredible opportunity. It's called contrarian investing. You know, when, when, when there, I hate the expression, but when there's blood running in the streets, that's when you buy and you'll yeah. be able to get stuff at cents on the dollar. If you're willing to take action, focus on cash flow. forget, don't tell me, don't tell me what they paid for it and what you can buy it for. If it doesn't right. cash flow, it doesn't matter. Cash flow is everything. Yes. And you know, if you go to my rodslinks.com, you can, you can get my free book. You pay for the shipping to get the physical copy seven bucks or something, but, but it was a bestseller in multiple number one bestseller in multiple categories. But the subtitle is the new rules of real estate investing. It's called how to create lifetime cash flow through multifamily properties. But the subtitle is the new rules of real estate investing, i.e. the new rules being focus on freaking cash flow because yeah. that's what I needed to do. And, and, uh, and so, you know, that's what I would tell you, focus on cash flow, keep your head, right. Stay focused on what you want. Don't get sucked into the fear and you will, you can literally set you and your kids and their grandkids and their grandkids up for life in the mm -hmm. next few years. If yeah. you get, if you kick butt and learn this business as fast as you can build those relationships with people and, and you'll be able to do that at my event or go to other events, whatever, but build those relationships and, and you'll, you'll set yourself up for life and, and your kids yeah. and their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Stay away from the fear. Stay away from like Rod said, media news, uh, oh, God, you know, yeah. stay informed, but yeah, stay informed in a way that doesn't impact you and doesn't take your time. Right. Like if you're right. spending 10 minutes, 15 minutes with news every day, that's, that's, a, that's going to bring you down. Yeah. And, no uh, question. No yeah. question. Hey, I'm bumping up against a hard yeah. stop brother. You, you um, betcha. Um, so, so I just want to real quick go through, uh, just mention your resources again. Oh, thanks. So yeah, rodslinks.com, rodslinks.com has everything free, yep. lots of free stuff. Uh, text, if you're driving text rod to 72345 and you'll get into my ecosystem. You'll get my website rodindenver.com for the boot camp, but you'll have access to everything else. Um, and, uh, I hope you listen to my podcast and, and yeah. if, if you give me five minutes a week, I'll juice you. It's called lifetime cash flow through real estate investing. Tate is very there much a go. pleasure to meet you, my friend. You're, Thank I can you, tell sir. why you're a huge success Thanks. and I really appreciate you having me on brother. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, Rod Cleef, the one and only. Thank you so much, sir. This has been a pleasure and, uh, hopefully I'll get to see you at the end of July. Well, I hope you can make it. You're yeah. coming as my guest. Okay, bro. I appreciate Thanks. that. Thank you. Thanks, listeners. Have a great one. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to The Apartment Guys with Tate Seymour. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.